Okay, let's put projected sale price 430. We'll use their number, 430. Now here's 000. the problem though. This is a PDF, it's not editable. Okay. All right. <laughs> so just take notes on your end. <laughs> yes. You put, All right. you put 430,000 right there, right? Yeah. Um, top yep. Okay, you go back uh, and do the back payments penalty. Now that's a first loan balance of 268,000. Yeah, that goes on the second one. Put 268. So somebody's got to keep a running total here of these numbers for us. Mm -hmm. Back payments, penalties, and costs is 8,000 bucks. Let's assume that they're going to be out by February 15th, which means you're going to owe four months. So you got 8,000 there. Um, back real estate taxes and general liens. I assume that they're, uh, they're making the, these payments, but there's a possibility if this was California, California's taxes are due December 10th and April 10th. And it's possible that the lender won't make the tax payment if you're behind on mortgage payments. So you, you have to check and see if that's the case. Um, interim mortgage payments. These are the payments, uh, the next line, that you will have to make in addition to the 8,000 until such time as the rehab can be done and you find a cash buyer. So let's assume that it's gonna take six months, you know, for, I don't know what the lead time is for something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're looking at six months, two of which between now and then, so add four months of payments, that's another 8,000 bucks, right? Um, if all the taxes are included, uh, you don't need to put interim property taxes. Okay, cosmetic fix up. I guarantee you if they've got a leaking roof, there's something else wrong with the house. These mm -hmm. things come in pairs in a minimum. Carpet, paint, I mean, you're gonna sell this thing for a full retail price. So you've gotta go in and put some of these numbers in. Um, let's say the gutters, the roof and all, let's say that's 10,000 bucks. But let's say you go in and you've gotta change out some of the rest of this stuff and you're gonna put stuff in here. Let's say it's another $10,000, okay? Um, <clears throat> So total, uh, total fix up is what do you say? It's, let's say it's 20. Okay. Total of 20. Uh, loan prepayment penalty. Now this is designed if you have to go get a loan to pay off or to catch up the existing uh, note yeah, that's your, out there. This is your hard money loan. Yeah, this is your hard money loan. Um, but so we're not going to put anything in there because you're going to buy it subject to, but you could put, you know, the, the cost of the 10,000, the 8,000, the other 8,000, that kind of thing. So, you know, you've got some interest there. If you're borrowing $30,000 and you're buying at 12%, that's, you know, 3,000 bucks a year that you're going to, $3,600 a year you're going to pay. Um, so you could put that in for a half a year, eight, another $1,800. Contribution to buyer's costs, uh, I would put 3%. 3% of your purchase price is going to be about $13,000. Selling commission, uh, take uh, 6% of uh, $430,000 uh, times 6% is about $25,800. Transactional expenses, uh, let's say figure 2%. On 430,000, that's 8,600 dollars. Mm -hmm. All right, so has anybody kept track of all this crap? <laughs> <laughs> what I'd like to point out here is that all we're doing is we're starting with the selling price, and these little lines here are the minus symbol. This is right. so if we're selling it for 430, minus all this stuff here that we just went through to see what the real net equity is on the whole deal. So let's just run through it. 430. Minus there was eight thousand. The the back payments was eight. Yeah, plus uh, the existing loan of two sixty eight. Yep. Plus we said interim mortgage payments another four months, which is another eight. Mm -hmm. Minus um, the cosmetic fix up we said was twenty. Mm -hmm. um, and then we figured eighteen hundred dollars of interest for our hard money loan. Yep. Yep. And then contribution of buyer's cost, 3% of 430 was around 13,000 ballpark. And then selling commission was about 25,000. 
-hmm. And then 2% was about another, let's say 8,000. Uh, that leaves us 346, 200. Oh, wait, I forgot to put in the, uh, the mortgage of 268. So 346, 23, let's just round up 346. 346 minus 282, which is the underlying mortgage. That's $64,000 net equity in this project. You said 64. 282 was the underlying mortgage. I think it was 268, but that's all right. Okay, well, let's, I add 14 to that number. So we're looking at $78,000 projected net equity proceeds, 78. And yep. you would typically divide that in two, and you would tell them, I'm going to give you uh, 39000 half of 78. And you're going to make 39 after you do all this work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in other words, Mr. Seller. I ain't giving you 130,000. You're going to get 30. And you're going to like it. <laughs> yeah. Or I'm not doing business with you. Yeah. Um, now, like I said, you're trying to take a, you know, you're, you're trying to take a pretty house, a, a non pretty house and turn it into a pretty house deal but you've got to take a situation when you're in foreclosure and there's equity and there's work to be done. You've got to use the net equity worksheet to see what your real numbers are. And shockingly, people don't ever do this and they don't really get detailed. I've done this hundreds of times and presented this to sellers or had my girls present this to sellers. And the only thing they'll ever argue about, and they won't argue about splitting the net or any of that kind of stuff, they'll come in and they'll pick part and say, well, I can do blinds for cheaper than that. Um, I, I can, I'll have my uh, dishwasher repaired instead of uh, replaced, you know, st stuff like that. And so they'll come in and, you know, okay, how much, blah, blah, let them spend their time fiddle farting around with the cosmetic fix up and you may have to adjust it 2000. Okay. I'll give you 41,000 instead of 39. Will that do the deal? Okay. Done. Because some of these costs you're not really going to have, you've got to put in here, but you're not really going to have, right? Um, you may want to sell it yourself, you know, yeah. you may, you may be able to get a 3% commission instead of a 6% commission. Any of that kind of stuff that you do goes to your side of the equation. You don't give them any of that later on. Right. Well, he, here's another point I want to make here. This, as I said before, is a tool to negotiate the price lower, your purchase price with the seller. That does not mean that you got to go in here and do all this cosmetic fix up. Right. You can you still could sell wholesale it as this is. deal out. Right. So we're just, all this is, is a way to negotiate a lower price on your acquisition. It has nothing to do with your exit. Right. Yeah. Exit strategy is irrelevant. You're doing this as if it's going to be an all cash deal, a full rehab going back on the market. Cause these people are looking at a number that indicates you know, that, that would be appropriate for a nice house in great shape in that area. This is not that. Right. So you do the work as if they see. And, and what happens is this forces them to kind of pick their poison. I mean, uh, you know, do you want us to really pick up these payments or do you want to make up the payments? If you really want us to get 430,000, we're going to have to fix the carpet. We're going to have to repair that broken uh, dishwasher and we have to fix the roof. And it's all got to look nice. It's got to look like a $430,000 house when we're done. So th this puts everything in front of a seller. And, you know, this is not designed to be a kind of hide the weenie thing. This is designed to be show it to everybody. Here's the numbers. Here's what is, you know, can't argue with this stuff, right? Yeah. They'll, they'll come in and say, well, you can get this thing done in four months instead of six. Really? You're it's two months behind. You haven't done it. I think it, it would probably be better if you're, when you're going through this sheet with them, that you get them to come up with these numbers because then they came out of their mouth. Right. Well, the, the known stuff, the, the big stuff, I would just, I wouldn't let them focus on much more than the cosmetic fix up. Say, listen, if you can, I'm shooting $20,000 for this rehab budget, which is low. Um, but if you can do it cheaper, give me the quotes and we'll, we'll make that more profit and we'll split it because I'm still paying for the work. You're just getting quotes. Yeah. I'm paying for the work. So I ain't paying it and then giving it all to you. Yeah. 
Now, on this particular deal, if I would you do the fix up and then just sell it retail, or I guess the other option is selling it work for equity with terms. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you know, you could potentially do it uh, wholesale. Wholesale, yeah, you of know. course. But you've got so many strikes against you on this deal. They're forty percent through their foreclosure period. Um, I don't even know the laws in Florida. You may get down to the end and, and the lender may require you to pay the entire mortgage balance. And that's why these other, uh, some of these other sections up here that talk about, you know, costs and things like that, you'll have to assume that you'll, you may have to pay off the loan in full. You know, you can only do that if there's enough equity in there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your, your best bet on these things this is designed to buy a house that needs to be fixed up and then sold for all cash. Right. So does, does this, this follow the Mayo formula? I'm curious. 430,000 times, and this is a higher price house. So we do 0.8, 344 minus 20. I wouldn't, I would never do in this coming market. I would never do anything less than 70%. I mean, anything more than 70%. I wouldn't okay. do eight. So what was our price here that we came up with? 430. Um, oh, it's, they would make, uh, let's say 40,000. Plus the 268. Plus, plus the two. Yeah. Plus the, yeah. Yes. Well, plus you're going to have to put a couple months of holding costs in addition to the two that you're already paying. So 268 and let's say 40 plus, let's say six. 68 plus 40 plus 6. 314 essentially is what they're selling it for. So if you do 70% minus 20,000 of repairs, it comes out to 299, 299,000. See, this is your overpaying. You're overpaying, yeah. But I, I know I've heard a lot of people, including Ron, talk about if the house is over, if it's a high dollar house, you can get away with using 80% because you're still going to make enough money on the deal. So you can look at it however you want, use whatever percentage you want. Well, when you take 80% uh, minus 20 for now rehab, you're, you're at 324. So you're good there. Yeah, we're right on target. That yeah. meets the criteria using the higher. I mean, even then it's skinny, right? You, If you're in a rehab business, you want to be at like 65% ARV minus cost of repairs to really be safe because what happens when the market sinks you know six months from now when you're going to get paid for this property yeah. the market may it may not be a four hundred and thirty thousand dollar house anymore Correct. it may be 410 yeah and you can adjust that on this form right at the top you can go back in we should probably do this thing so it's kind of fill in the blank or something but this the, the best thing to do is print them out and just fill them in in hand it makes it look like it's designed to be printed out and filled in with the seller at the house yeah yeah, yeah. i've seen for the known stuff yeah lou brown he talks about this too he's got a similar thing and uh he'll get down to the bottom and he'll ask the seller um you know how much money should i make on this deal for solving this big problem for you and they'll always say like five thousand dollars <laughs> and so and then he'll he'll get to um, he is a little different. He'll get to a purchase price that is less than, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, is less than what they owe on the house. In other words, they're underwater on this thing. And he'll ask them, well, how can we come up with the difference here? And it may be a thirty grand difference. And sometimes they just say, well, I'll come to closing with thirty grand cash, or they'll have to find it somewhere else up in this sheet. For example, you know, if I can, this is a way he pitches on how to do subject two. Well, if I can eliminate some of this uh, cost of funds down here by doing a, by taking over your existing debt, then we could, you know, strike some of this cost here. And, you know, so he just works with yeah. them. To, yeah, come up with the price. deal that way. Yep. Uh, but, it, you know, from his perspective, that means every offer he makes is a cash offer. It's just when you get to the, the brass tacks on this thing, the seller starts to realize, okay, we need to like carve out some more uh, money in this deal here uh, on this offer that this guy Lou is making to me. And one of the ways he says we can do that is by doing seller financing or, or a subject to. 
you know, or just take over payments. And so then the cash offer essentially becomes a subject to deal. Thank <laughs> you.